Hi there, crafty friends. Welcome and thank you for joining me. My name is Melissa Miller, and today I would like to make a card using the Framed Florets Stamp and Die Set. I was going for a watercolor look here on the flowers, so this card does take a little bit more time. It's a little bit fussy, but it is so pretty when you get it done. So let's take a look at the stamp set. In this stamp set, you get some wonderful sentiments and then you get the floral images. And then in the die set, you get 13 dies. You get the frame that we used on our card here. And you also get the dies that will cut out all of our images. So let's go ahead and get those out also because we will need those. And then you also have some other oval dies here, but I didn't use these. I only used the other one. So let's go ahead and get started. There's a lot of work involved in this card, but it is so pretty when it's done. I just love that. We're actually going to use a different, we're gonna change it a little bit. We're gonna use a different color on the flower and we're gonna change it to our gold foil. This is the rose, I'm sorry, the gold and rose gold metallic paper, but we're going to be using the brushed metallic cardstock for our project today. So let me get this set over there. We've got our dies. So first we need to heat emboss our images. So I've got everything set up on my Stamparatus. And what I did here was we are using watercolor paper because we are going to do a little bit of watercoloring. So our watercolor paper comes in a six by nine and all I did was cut it in half. So I just cut that in half there and we are going to heat emboss. So if you've ever seen our watercolor paper, you know that one side is a little bit smoother than the other side. So because we are heat embossing, we are going to use the side that is just a little bit smoother. So let's get that in there. And I seem to have misplaced my embossing powder and my embossing buddy. So we're going to make sure that we get a lot of powder on here. We do not want any of our embossing powder to stick on there where we don't want it. And we will actually be doing this twice. So we've got our Versamark and we are going to ink up our stamps really, really well. I have a pretty newer pad here, so it's really juicy, and it does ink up pretty well. So I'm just going to do this twice. Um, and we want to make sure that we do this twice, make sure that's up in the corner, because your watercolor paper is textured. So you want to make sure that you get that Versamark in all of those nooks and crannies. So that's why we're going to ink it up twice. And I will have all items used in the description below along with links to purchase them. I think that's good. Let's see. And we don't want to push too hard. We're just putting a little bit of pressure. I know it might look like I'm really pressing on there but I'm not, I'm just giving it light pressure just to make sure that that stamp makes good contact with the um, paper. So then I've got my gold embossing powder here. Let's go ahead and get this powder on there. And I need to order some more gold powder. I am almost out. I've been using quite a bit of it lately. All right, that looks pretty good. And then just, you can see where you may have missed a spot or two. So just, just dump some more powder on there. I think that's pretty good. Let me go ahead and heat that up. And we are die cutting, so it is okay if there are a few little 
speckles of powder on there, but I do try to get them all off. So I will go ahead and heat this up. And then we need to go ahead and do the whole process over again. We are going to, oops, we are going to flip that paper over in our stamparatus so we can do the other side because we need two sets of images. But let me wipe that off. I know that um, kind of bothers me to have powder on there. So let me just wipe that off. There we go. And then we can turn our paper over and emboss on the other side. Just like that, make sure it's up in the corner. We are going to put some powder on here to make sure nothing sticks where we don't want it. And then just repeat the process. There we go. I just love watching those images come to life. So we've got our images all heat embossed. Let's go ahead and put this away since we don't need it anymore. And if you could please leave me a comment. YouTube loves comments. And give me a thumbs up. I would appreciate it. Let me go ahead and just clean this off a little bit. I don't want to, Versamark is okay, but I don't like to leave it on my stamps without cleaning them off. And I'm just using my Stampin' Mist. I have a little bottle that I always keep on my desk. I think I've shown this before, don't judge me. This is a very old bottle and I just refill it. Um, with the large bottle. So I just use my Stampin' Mist. It's very old and loved, so that's why it's looking a little raggedy there. So let's put this off to the side. And so now we've got our image and we're ready to do our faux kind of watercolor look here. So I am going to bring in my um, my cutting board here. I got this at, what is that store? It's the orange, they have the orange letters. Um, I can't think of it. It's like a Dollar Tree, but it's not a Dollar Tree. Oh gosh, I can't think of it, but it was a dollar. So I just picked up this cutting board for a dollar. I am not going to tape my images down to the cutting board because we will be die cutting them and we will be using our water painters. I am going to be using the medium one here. And then I've got my block. Actually, let me get that out of the way. I've got my block here, and we are going to be using our re-inkers. I have Mossy Meadow for my leaves, and then I've got Highland Heather for my flowers. So what I do here, I've got a little rag off to the side. I'll actually bring it in and I'll put that there. And up here, we're going to do our color. So all we need is just the tiniest little dot for this. And then we are going to take our water painter and put some water right next to that. And then we'll just get a little dot and we'll add that in until we get the color that we want. I think that's probably pretty good. I don't want it too dark because I was trying to stick with a light pastel-y kind of look on here. So let's just put that there. I am bringing in another paintbrush because I do want to get my flowers wet before I paint them. So I'm just going to spread some water in the wells that the embossing created. 
And that's how I love to do this. So that embossing powder raises and it creates little wells. And can you see how that color just kind of spreads? That is so pretty. I just love this look. Just like that. You don't even have to paint the whole flower. You can just put it around the base of the flower and that will spread. So let's go ahead and do another flower. And if you get too much water on there, you can just take your rag and you can just kind of dab on it and that'll pick up the water. So I'm just gonna put a little bit more back on there. And you don't want a whole lot of water, but you do want enough water that it will take your color and spread it. That is so pretty. I just love this look. All right, let's continue on our other flowers. I think we'll do this one here. Just like that. All right, we'll pick up some more color and we will spread that. We'll just put it at the base of the flower and it just gets pulled out and it looks beautiful. One little spot there. I must not have gotten water in that little well. There we go. That's a little better. Oh, that one either. Let's make sure we get water in those other little areas over here in our flowers, just like that. And then we can put a dab of color in those. Perfect. Now I will do the other flower. And I'm just going to go ahead and continue to do my flowers here. I will speed this up. It does take a little bit of time, but it is super easy. Okay, so I did notice that I had a little shadow from the window in there. So I went ahead and closed that. Um, typically I record my videos earlier in the day and I guess I didn't realize I was going to get a shadow. But I noticed I missed a spot. So what I want to do is I want to show you when I um, change colors. Your The tip of your paintbrush here will stain. It will stain, but it will be fine. As long as there is clear water running out of it, you can go ahead and switch to your next color. So let's work on, I saw a purple area that I missed. There it is. Okay, so you just uh, run, the, squeeze the water through your pen or through your painter until it's clean, and then you can move on to your next color. So let's get a little bit of water on here and do this little area that I forgot. I just love watching the color spread on there. That is so pretty and it dried rather quickly. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna go ahead and squeeze water through my paintbrush here so it runs clear and it runs clear so I can put that away now and it will be ready for the next time. Let's get this water out of the way. I am going to clean my block 
And I just have an old rag that I will just wipe that ink off of and it's good as new. And I'll put that aside. So now I think what I want to do is this is still just a little bit wet. So I am just going to heat set it for a few minutes and then I am going to take all my dies and cut these images out twice because we have five images times two, so 10. And then I will also be using this die and I am going to cut out a couple more of the sprigs out of our brushed metallic. And this is the very lightest one. This is the light gold. So I'm gonna do a couple more of those and I will cut these out after I heat set it a little bit and then I will be right back. Okay, so I've got all my images die cut and I just love how you get that watercolor look without using watercolors. It's so easy, just your uh, ink refills and a little bit of water and they just come out beautiful. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this put together now. So what I did next was I took the oval die and I cut three in, out of plain white cardstock and I glued those together. And then I did one out of our brushed metallic cardstock and we're going to glue that on there, but I wanted to show something to you. You would think that it would be the same either way, but it's not. It's just a little bit off. If you can see that, I've got these two ends together, but it's just a little bit off. So before you glue it, make sure that you've got it in the correct orientation. If it's turned the other way, you will be a little bit off. So that's just something to keep in mind when stacking this die. So now let's just go ahead and add some glue here and we will get that foil piece added. And I can't really hold this very well, so I'm kind of a little shaky right now. There we go. That's better. And I think just your main corners there and it will work good. I didn't have any problems. Just the larger areas that you can put glue on is all you need to be concerned about and it will hold together fine. Okay, so now we've got our foil on there. Perfect. And I think I will take a block and set it on here real quick just so it can set up a little bit and then i've got my card base already i did a top folding a2 four and a quarter by five and a half and we've got our background i used of course i used my favorite die this is the stitched greenery die and I just four and a quarter by five and a half, ran that through my die cutting machine and got my background. But I did a purple one just in case to see if maybe we wanted to do it in purple. And I don't think they quite match. Even though we used the Highland Heather uh, refill, the Highland Heather paper is just different because we did water down the ink. So that's going to be why. So I think we will go ahead and just stick with our white like my original plan we can go ahead and glue this down now and i'm just going to put glue again in those larger areas i just love my little bottles here so let's do that don't forget to leave me a comment please let me know what you think of this card in this video YouTube just, YouTube just loves comments and thumbs up. All right, so then we'll just place this. I kind of centered it, just eyeballed it. So we'll just center that there. And what you can do is if you've got your grid paper, you can put your grid, your uh, panel centered in your grid paper, and then you can move it as needed. 
just like that. So let's do that. And then I've also already got my sentiment done. When I cut out the frame, the uh, three white ones that I stacked, it gave me a whole bunch of these, you know, the middles. So I just heat embossed in gold, wishes for a beautiful birthday on there. And we are just going to go ahead and stick that right in the middle. This card is very simple. It just did take a little bit of time with the um, water coloring. But other than that, it does come together really easily. So let's just make sure that's in there. And then if we have to, we can wiggle it a little bit to make sure that sentiment is straight. Just make sure you put some pressure on there so it goes all the way down to your panel. And that should be good. And then what I'm going to do is we're going to start building. I am going to bring in my Stampin' Seal here just for these pieces because I don't like to do foil on foil. It just seems like it takes a long time for it to dry. So I'm just gonna put a little Stampin' Seal on the back of there. We will put one of these up here, just like that. And we'll put a little bit on the back of this one. Oops, let's get that up there so you can see. Just put a little bit on that one. I don't wanna bend my leaf. Actually, it'll probably get covered up, but, and then we'll put our other one down here just like that so those are in place now we don't have to worry about those any longer now let's figure out where we want our images so i took my main image here and i've kind of got it right around the w for the wishes and then we're just going to add and we're just going to place these until we figure out how we like them and then we can glue them down. I think that's probably good there. Let's put another flower here. And then we'll do a little spray right here. And then I have another flower down at the bottom. I think that's good. I think we should get those placed. So we'll start with our big one and we can use our liquid glue here. We can just put some on there because we are also going to be using dimensionals to help hold this in place. So I've got that there right about where I want it. And what I did was I took some of my mini dimensionals that I got in a paper pumpkin kit a while back and to make it easier, we're going to take the backings off while they are still on the sheet because it's just easier to pick them up and place them that way. Oops, let's start with what we've got done. We're just going to take these and slide them underneath that image just like that so it pops up that image and at the same time it holds it in place for us so it's doing double duty so we can put another one down here under this leaf right there and now that will not go anywhere so we can continue with our images here. Just put a little glue back there. I'm going to tuck that one under there like that. Just like that. And then we can add a flower. Now when because the paper was wet your images do kind of get a little bit wrinkled so I just kind of straighten them out, fluff them up a little bit and they're fine. So that's good there. Let's put a dimensional underneath that flower, just like that. And that will help hold that in place also. 
and we can add some more. I think we need a flower up here first though. We'll put that one there. I was trying to turn it and I dropped it. And then we'll take our other spray of leaves here. And we will put this right there. Good. And we can add some more dimensionals. Let's add another one right here to cover up that, to hold that flower in place. And I think my little boyfriend is outside. I saw him walk by and I think he's waiting for me to come out and visit him. He's my little boyfriend from across the street. I've talked about him before. He just turned two. So let's add that there. I wonder if we should put another, that looks kind of, let's do another little leaf cluster right there. I saw him walk by and I think he wants me to come out. He's going to have to wait right now though. All right, there we go. We've got that. And then should we do another big one? No, I think just one. I think we'll just put this one down here and maybe that other small little leaf like that. I think that'll look good. All right, let's do that. We'll put this one here. Let's see, we'll put it over that foiled image. And then we'll do this right there. Perfect. Now I do need to bring in some dimensionals to help hold those down. So we'll grab a couple of those. We'll put this one right there. Get the backing off of another one. And we'll put this one underneath the flower. See that glue just does not stick very well to the, it sticks, it just takes a minute. And sometimes I'm impatient. There we go, perfect. So now we can embellish. Make sure we put our cover back on our glue. And here, these actually say they are our red and green adhesive backed dots, but in the catalog or online, they are actually festive pearls. So we're going to add some of our festive pearls. I put one inside of each of the flowers that has a middle. just like that. I may have just taken the glue off of that. No, it's sticking. Okay. And then I put another one right here in the center on the frame, just for a little accent. And then we're just going to scatter. I'm going to do three down here, just like that. And then I've got two more. I used a lot of pearls on this one, but I really, really, really think that they make it just perfect. So there we go, there's our panel. Let's go ahead and add that to our card base. Put a good crease in there. Get some glue back here. And anytime that you are gluing down your uh, piece that you've used a, um, stitched background with always put a just a little bit extra glue because you just want to make sure that holds really really well so let's just get that on our card base and i am going to just put a little pressure around the edges just to make sure that it adheres nicely just like that i don't want that to come up before it adheres. So just a little pressure and you should be good. There we go. And there's our card. Wishes for a beautiful birthday. I just love that. That is so pretty. I love that watercolor look. 
So I've got a couple others here that I did too. The one we completed today is in Highland Heather. I did one in our uh, Blushing Bride and I used the Blushing Bride ink for the sentiment. Um, here's my very first one that I did in the Highland Heather. And this one I did in Calypso Coral. I was just testing it out. I wanted something that was a little darker, that stood out a little brighter. So I tried the Calypso Coral and I tried the uh, soft sea foam background here. Looks like I got a little bit of glue on there. There we go. This is the one we did today. And this was our sample for the beginning of our video. And I wanted to tell you, because we did two sets of the flowers, we have all these left over. We could do another one and make it like a rainbow card. So you have all these pieces left over and they're just wonderful. You could make a multicolored floral arrangement there and that would be beautiful. So please don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Please comment. Please like. Please share. I will have everything listed in the description below. If you need a catalog or have any questions, please just send me an email to handmadehugsbymelissa at gmail.com and I will see you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.